Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're dealing with a few issues that keep popping up age after age through reflection and examination of the scriptures. This time, what does the Bible say about freedom? We've tackled the topic of freedom before, but basically it's complicated. The basic idea behind freedom is that a person isn't constrained through force or pressure and has the opportunity to do the things they want to do. However, nobody has that kind of broad, universal freedom. For example, if I decide to go around robbing people, I'm exercising the freedom to rob them. But I won't have very many other freedoms in any law-fearing country. Let's see if we can pin down some of the basics of what makes freedom what it is. For so is the will of God, that by doing well you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not as making liberty a cloak for malice, but as the servants of God. 1 Peter 2, 15-16 Our freedom shouldn't be the kind of freedom that hides evil and malicious acts. This outlines an important distinction in the understanding of freedom. There are multiple kinds of freedom, depending on the precise thing you want to be free to do. If all a person wants is the freedom to do evil, they'll probably go around making friends with criminals and trying to use crime to make money with which to control people and protect themselves from the consequences of their actions through corruption. However, there's another kind of freedom, the freedom to do good, to work, build, and protect, to invent, design, and craft wonderful, beautiful things, and occasionally things that aren't beautiful or go unappreciated. It's fine. Uh, these are freedoms to do things that aren't wrong. So there's the freedom to do good and the freedom to do evil, and they're not the same. One thing that often confuses this issue is that very evil people often use their freedom to do worse evil and become very rich and capable of protecting their fellow evildoers by cheating people, stealing, killing, or making dishonest deals with others. And they're not always punished for their lies and evil doing. In fact, it often seems like they're succeeding more than good people because they're willing to use evil tactics, which give them an advantage. However, that doesn't mean they're more free. But because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privately to spy our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into servitude. Galatians 2, 4 The freedom to do good is more free than evil doing can ever make you. There's a reason why tyrants always seek to encourage evil-doing and criminality. Woe to the wicked unto evil, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. Isaiah 3.11 When a person exercises the freedom to do evil, they sometimes gain an advantage, but in exchange they incriminate themselves. A person who's been incriminated is often found out, sometimes by their friends, sometimes by their relatives, in the worst cases, by a powerful person who offers to keep their secret in exchange for a favor or two. Though it's not given special attention per se in the scriptures, blackmail is one of the largest threats that evil people face in this life. When the only thing keeping you out of prison, or keeping you alive, is the discretion of someone else, it's pretty safe to say that your freedom to do evil doesn't feel so free anymore. But now being made free from sin, and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto sanctification, and the end, life everlasting. Romans 6.22 This is why the Bible refers to sin as slavery. The freedom to behave irresponsibly and without concern for your fellow man is only a short-term freedom, and quickly outlives its usefulness, changing from an advantage into a curse. Keeping this in mind, it's clear what we need to do. So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free. By the freedom wherewith Christ has made us free, stand fast and be not held again under the yoke of bondage. Galatians 4, 31 to 5, 1 The freedom that doing good gives us should be valued by us because it keeps us from being enslaved. We should put effort into maintaining that freedom by shunning evil generally and grave evil especially. If you do something horrible to keep your friends or family from finding out you committed a bad action, you probably shouldn't commit that action. However, there's still the temporary advantages of evildoers to be dealt with. How do we overcome those advantages and keep them from enslaving us regardless? Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed him, If you continue in my word, you shall be my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
John eight thirty one to thirty two. The truth can't be hidden forever, and in time it pops up to be seen. For people who obey the will of God, that truth holds no fear for them, because even though they've sinned, like nearly everyone, they've repented and tried to live a holy life. It's all any reasonable person can expect. However, if a person has fought to preserve their sins, protect their friends from justice, and struggled all their might to keep doing evil and not getting caught, is there anything more terrifying to that person than the truth? Could there ever be anything that would cause more fear than to have everyone suddenly know the depth and extent of their wickedness? Truth is the sword that liberates the good and punishes the evil. The truth truly sets us free. Next, a new season begins with more analyses of the Psalms, beginning with Psalm 26. See you then. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.